So it is great to be back, though, and uh, good to see everybody. Uh, the, the longer we're here in Colombia as a family, the, the more we love it. It's really uh, a, a place that is endearing itself to us and uh, the relationships with people in the athletic department and people in the community and, and our alumni, our fans, our donors, just with, with every uh, week that passes, um, you know, we feel more connected to this place as a family. So it's great to be back. Appreciate the opportunity. Um, it's, it was a really good summer. And um, I, I give Shane Beamer a lot of credit. When he talks about family, he means it. And he, he's, he's very true to that. And uh, as assistant coaches and support staff, we all appreciate that time. Uh, Jen and I celebrated our 25th wedding anniversary this summer, which was cool. And we didn't make a real big deal out of it. But she has officially applied for sainthood. The paperwork has been turned in for that. Um, we got to spend some time with our kids, which is getting harder now as the older two are, are doing their own things with, uh, with college and internships and so forth. Um, I read a great book on the sinking of the Lusitania by Eric Larson, if, uh, if anybody's interested in that. I power washed the driveway which was very satisfying. And then, uh, to top it all off, I binge-watched the terminal list uh, right before preseason camp started, which was, uh, which was fantastic, uh, if you guys haven't done that yet. So, feeling good, fired up, ready for season 30 here as a college football coach. Um, preseason's going well so far from a special team standpoint, and that starts with veteran guys who are practicing the way you would expect veteran guys to practice. And for me, uh, when, when the technique and the fundamentals that we've been teaching from day one start to become habit for these guys, not just on special teams, but on offense and defense, um, that's really satisfying to see. And, and that's when you know, um, you know your foundation is, is really taking root. Um, guys are speaking the same language. You know, we go in the meetings. Um, veteran guys are, are interacting uh, with confidence because they know the answers to the questions. They're, they're coaching younger guys in drills. Uh, and staff-wise, everybody's using the same language, the same terminology. And so it's carrying over uh, to different situations on the field and in the meeting room, which is all really good stuff. Sterling Lucas and Jody Wright, those are two great additions to our staff. And uh, they have been extremely helpful to me. Um, they're eager to learn special teams. They, they want to do it our way. They're taking pride in, in their little pods that, uh, that they have to coach. And uh, really feel like those are two guys that are 100% are in the foxhole with us. And uh, I enjoy working with them every day. Um, in terms of, of veterans, uh, DK Joyner, as you guys know, has been fabulous since we first got here. Mo Caba just continues to improve on defense and special teams. Jordan Strawn has really bought in, and um, you know he was a little bit uh, nicked up the other day, or whatever. He would not come out of a punt period, and and that's just the kind of leadership that uh, that you love to see. Um, Green, Reed, Mangrum, Leggett, Kenyon, all of those guys. I could I could go on and on, but they're really taking great pride in their work and, and want to be on stuff. Um, my three big guys in the punt shield, uh, <laughs> it's hard not to get emotional uh, when I talk about these guys, but, uh, but, but Boogie Huntley, Tonka Hemingway, Vershawn Lee, um, you know, I've coached at, at, at Dartmouth and at Lehigh and at Rice, you know, three of maybe the, the, the top 30, 40 schools in the country. And, and these guys, intelligence-wise, are unbelievable how quickly they pick things up and uh, they're just great human beings like if, if if i'm out there and and i'm an alum i'm a donor i'm i'm a gamecock i mean those are three guys i, I want working for me someday um I, I i i'm dinner will be on me uh you know 10 years from now down in paulie's island or something uh with those three guys because they're awesome um we've got a really good freshman class and, uh, and some of those guys are making their presence felt already. Um, Nick Amamori, Kawan Banks, Donovan Westmoreland, Keenan Nelson's been getting better. So, and I could go on about several more freshmen, but I really like the way those guys have jumped in. You know they love football. They love to practice. 
Uh, they're trying hard to, to learn to do it our way, which is really good. Um, in terms of our specialists, um, it, it has totally been next man up, which has been great to see. Uh, you know, I think as a, as a leader, you, you don't blink when there's adversity. You, you, you just keep moving on and you find creative ways to, to be successful and challenge guys to be their best. And these guys have, have really responded here uh, in preseason. So um, I'm pleased with them. And I'm, I'm sure you guys will probably have some questions about depth and competition at those positions. But um, it's been really uh, satisfying to, to, to see those guys um, in it together and, and competing the right way and supporting each other. And, you know, we've been mixing and matching um, punters and kickers and holders and snappers uh, uh, throughout the, the last 12 practices. And, and, and it's been good to see those guys continue to improve. Pete, a couple for you. Um, what would you say the chances are of Kai retaking this place by the first game all right now? And if he can't go, who's your top candidate to punt on that first game? Sure. I'm not sure uh, where Kai will be in two and a half weeks. I certainly hope he's ready. But uh, Alex Herrera has been our uh, backup punter uh, going back to last year. And he's been very solid in preseason. William Joyce is much improved. I mean, dramatically improved since last year. Everything from his operation times to his hang times. Um, Mitch Jeter has been taking reps, and uh, Mitch is a very good athlete, very good rugby punter. Um, so we we have a lot of options uh, from a punting standpoint, and and I kind of like that going into the first game. I, you know, a little bit of mystery, a little bit of international intrigue is is not a bad thing going into the, the first game. Pete, we know how much you love nicknames. Um, who's your favorite nickname on the team and why? Well, we, we do have some new ones. Um, one of my and, – and, you know, these just, these just happen organically, so it's pretty cool. But uh, so, so Kawan Banks is now Banks of America, all right? And he has been doing some really good things. Uh, that guy competes. Uh, we had a um, – a kickoff versus kickoff return drill a few days ago. And we had him scripted for some of the latter reps in that drill. And uh, he, he twisted his ankle in the 19th rep. And he was slated to go again in the 22nd rep. And he was back in there. And he won that 22nd rep against a veteran guy. Um, so I, I, I really like the way that guy competes. He's, he's tough. He's rugged. Uh, you know, he's not he's not the tallest guy, but he, he makes up for it by how hard he plays. And uh, and he's got promise. Uh, he's shown promise as a kick returner as well. So that that's one of the one of the new ones. And uh, I, I threw this one out there yesterday and, and he looked at me like I had two heads. But Marshawn Lloyd, I, I called him Lloyd's of London yesterday. And because uh, I was asking him about, uh, you know, when he's going to be back uh, full speed and Marshawn uh, will excel on special teams this year. He has done a great job, um, and he, you know, he's he's missed a couple days, whatever. But uh, um, that guy has worked incredibly hard, and uh, I'm anxious to see what he can do this fall, helping out on some units as well. Um, we've seen William Joyce taking some getting some reps at holder in practice. What's Correct. the situation with holding um, with Kroger still out going into the first game? Yes, so William's done a really nice job, and uh, Hunter Rogers holds as well. So there's been a nice little competition going on between those two guys, and um, I would anticipate that uh, that Kyle be you know uh, ready to go soon, doing that as well. But you always want to make sure that you have depth and and uh, that you know the next man can step in and, and get that done. So. Um, proud of what uh, William and, and Hunter have done, and Alex Herrera holds as well. So we've got good depth there, but I also like the fact that all of those guys are in that position group so that they can work at that stuff, um, not just for five minutes at the end of practice, but they can work at it uh, throughout the course of a practice, uh, and that, that's going to be helpful down the road as well. Pete, how would you evaluate the kind of place kicker position right now, and how's that competition gone? Yes, so 
Mitch Jeter is a little bit ahead um, in terms of, uh, of percentage of, of kicks made and so forth. Um, and, and he and Alex have been uh, dueling back and forth. Uh, Alex had a little bit of a slower start in, in the first few practices. But if you look at the, the last several practices here, he's made a number of pressure kicks. So um, the good news there is they're both doing well. And uh, we're not really in a rush to make a final decision. So we've been doing field goal pretty much in every practice. Uh, we've been putting them in some pressure situations, uh, whether that be at the end of practice and scrimmages, et cetera. Um, so we'll continue to, to chart those reps. And uh, you know, with a little over two weeks here to go, um, we'll make a decision a little bit closer to game day. You mentioned pressure kicks there. How do you simulate that in practice? And what does that kind of look like as you're you know, kind of trying to create pressure? Absolutely. So. Um, some of it ties into offensive and defensive situations in practice uh, where it might be a, a two-minute drill or overtime. Uh, we've used crowd noise. Uh, we've had um, you know, conditioning on the line where if, if somebody misses a kick, then, then the entire team's got to run. Um, you know, Coach Beamer and I try to, try to get in those guys' heads a little bit um, you know, just to distract them and, and things of that nature. And then... Our, our field goal block unit, uh, a big part of their job is, is not just to, to prepare themselves to, uh, to block kicks this year, but to also uh, put pressure on our field goal unit. So um, I think we've done a good job of that so far. Uh, Coach Beamer is always very good about uh, giving us the practice time we need to, to create those situations. Pete, I guess with deciding a starting kicker, is it I guess, what do you look at beyond just, is it just the guy who makes the most kicks? I mean, is it more than that? I guess just how do you actually like determine that? Sure. Well, the, the statistics and the data are part of it. Um, and then the other part of it is, um, you know, when and where were those kicks made and, and uh, were they the ones that, that you could envision um, being made when, when we need them, right, to, to win games in this league? So, and then the other thing is, uh, competition is ongoing, and, and this is something that, uh, that Shane and I certainly uh, are, are totally on the same page with, and he shares this with our entire team frequently, that uh, just because we may have a starting lineup um, going into the first game, that doesn't mean that, that that's going to be what it is in week four, five, six. Uh, even if you look at our specialists from last year, there were weeks where Alex Herrera kicked off for us. Um, there were uh, there was a situation two thirds of the way through the season where Hunter Rogers took over the long snapping duties because we continued to evaluate and chart and create competition as the year went on. So uh, I fully expect that's that's just you know coaching philosophy 101 for us here. So uh, I, I believe that's the way to keep everybody on their toes and at their best. Um, now, you, you want guys to be confident and comfortable and not looking over their shoulder, certainly. But, but I think guys knowing that the room is full of, of talented people that want to play just as much as they do, that, that's important too. Pete, what are the ideal t operation times for punt and for field goal? And kind of where do you feel like you are right now in terms of that with so many new guys? Sure. Um, punt is generally a, a 2.0. And, um, and we've done well. Um, Alex Herrera has always operated uh, very efficiently. Mitch Jeter is very efficient. William Joyce has improved dramatically from where he was this time a year ago. So with, with our snappers and those guys, uh, you know, we continue even with Kai out to do a good job there. Um, and then with field goal, there's a little bit of variation team to team based on on the depth of your hold, but generally one two five to, to one three uh, is uh, is is pretty safe um, and efficient, and and this group has been solid with that. Um, one thing that sometimes is overlooked is is the height of the kicks is is just as important. Uh, how high are those balls going when they cross the line of scrimmage, as well as how quickly they're getting off, and uh, we we always emphasize that in practice and, and uh, evaluate that when we look at our kickers. P, 
Pete, obviously, you've been a head coach before. Marcus has been a head coach before. You had Freddie Kitchens to, to the staff that has been a head coach before. I guess just adding, you know, having that group of folks on, on the staff to, to, who have been in that position, I guess, how much has that helped? And I guess, you know, in a couple of months that he's been here, I guess what Freddie kind of added to the staff as well. Well, that starts with Shane and Shane's personality, Shane's demeanor, Shane's humility. Um, he's always very welcoming to um, – any thoughts you have about practice organization or something that you saw happen on the field that day or, or how a certain situation might be handled. Um, you know, he's done a, a fabulous job and, and I think is, is way ahead of where a lot of people would be in, in year two as a head coach. Uh, he's grown up around it and was very much uh, prepared for this opportunity. But that learning mindset starting at the top uh, affects everybody in the building. And um, so that's, that's great for all of us that we feel comfortable being able to speak up in staff meetings and being able to speak up one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, Freddie's been a great addition. Uh, you know, he's had a relationship with Shane and some other guys on the staff going back. So there was a comfort level there that some of those relationships were in place. And it did not take him long to feel comfortable here. And I hope as assistant coaches and support staff and GAs and analysts that we did a good job of making him feel comfortable um, because he's a what you see is what you get kind of guy. And uh, I've certainly enjoyed being around him. I'm not in those offensive staff meetings. Um, I wish I was at times, you know, that's one thing I do miss. I love being able to work as independently as I do. Um, but there are times where, you know, that camaraderie of being in that room and coaching the tight ends or something like that, you, you do miss it from time to time. But, but uh, Freddie's very approachable, and, uh, and I know that the uh, offensive coaches really value having him in there. Pete, when we're at practice, we can kind of see who's taking punts, taking kicks from a returner standpoint. Who are maybe the top two or three guys that punt and kick returner, and just what do you like about that group overall? Absolutely. So... Uh, we've been putting a, a really big emphasis on particularly that group of kick returners and, uh, and trying to improve our timing back there, just going back to some things that, uh, that we want to improve upon from last year. And um, first of all, Juju loves football, and he, he really is coachable and really wants to please you and do things the right way. And I, I love his attitude and demeanor trying to be a more mature football player going into year two. Xavier Leggett is another guy who has done a nice job for us back there going back to spring practice and, and now um, in preseason as well. Lavasse Carroll is very natural catching the ball back there. Uh, DK Joyner, I already mentioned uh, Banks as a freshman. Um, so we're, we're Peyton Mangrum, uh, has re returned kicks. Juice Wells has returned kicks uh, all in this preseason. So I feel like our depth back there is very good right now. And uh, we've invested a lot of time to try to uh, create situations for those guys and to, and to work on the timing back there. And I think it's paying dividends. Uh, Josh Van uh, is, a, is a real versatile guy for us as a returner as well. He's, he's our top punt returner right now but he also has the ability to return kicks and is very comfortable back there. Uh, Marion Brown is uh, improved as a punt returner. And then Dante Miller, who's come in from Columbia, uh, is also a very capable punt returner and a guy we've gotten a lot of reps to this preseason. What's your uh, favorite Hootie and the Blowfish song, and has it changed since you've been here? Oh, see, so 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 uh, I, I certainly know who uh, Hootie and the Blowfish are, um, but you, you you have to skip. Even though, like, you know, the '90s should be the meat of the bell curve for me. I'm such an old school throwback guy that you you have to wind it back to like the '60s, the '70s, and then into the '80s a little bit more for me to be you know, throwing out one hit wonders and, and, and things like that. But, but I will say this, first of all, Luke Day and his staff do a great job of 
keeping the music very diverse down in the weight room. So it's not unusual uh, to, to be working in your office when the guys are lifting and, and all of a sudden, you know, who knows, you might hear uh, Tommy Two-Tone on down there, uh, you know, or you might hear, uh, you know, a Rick Springfield song going on down there or something. Of course, Creedence Clearwater Revival and, and, and The Who and all that stuff. Um, but, uh, no, and, and, and that, uh, that diversity of, of music certainly carries over to, uh, to the special teams meetings. We, we kicked it off with Brick House by the Commodores the other day, which was good made sure the guys understood just how long ago that, that that song came out. So um, that's that's one great thing about this building. We're constantly trying to educate them in every way, shape, and form. Anyone else speak? If not those of you who have Lusitania and power washing on your list, <laughs> please bring it down. Thanks so much, everybody. We'll see you soon.